I, be, I was an English high school English teacher for four years in um, back in Melbourne and the first thing I observed when I met my uh, year seven and eight students they were like oh, I don't want to read it's it's boring and I was going are you kidding me because I grew up in a house full of books I had you know Dr Seuss books uh, Alice in Wonderland the surprise and the delight of that uh, I had a German children's book called Shockheaded Peter, uh, which was cautionary tales, but really over the top and kind of funny. But I, I noticed, and Enid Blyton, I noticed that most of what I liked was, was funny. Uh, it had pictures and it had a, a lightness to it. So I said to the kids, what, what, when we'd go to the library, what are you looking for? And they go, something funny. And so I couldn't really find any funny books. This goes back 25 years ago. And so I started writing the type of little stories and cartoons and jokes that I'd always written for my friends when I was at school. And I used to publish a magazine when I was at school full of jokes and riddles and silly news items. So I just did the same thing for my kids. And they were kind of silly stories, you know, like... Um, I talk about uh, I was having a bath and I was attacked by sharks in the bath and I had to hit them with a rubber duck and kind of ridiculous but uh, the kids loved these this type of thing and then they would write their own bath time stories um, similarly for silly and then I would collect their pieces just little short stories and I'd get them to just do an illustration then I'd photocopy them make them into a book and then put it, put it to one copy in the library and one copy for them. And I'd say, you're all published authors now. You're sharing your sto stories with the school. And they started to understand that story t books and storytelling are just ways of interacting with people. Just mm -hmm. the person is not there right in front of you. So, so that's how I began turning my own students onto writing. Uh, your experience as a teacher, uh, has that um, brought anything to your writing? Uh, it certainly brought a kind of real purpose to the writing mm -hmm. in that I really felt these kids were missing out by dismissing reading as boring. And I, re I said, you can still play computer games and you can still watch movies. Um, you know, I do those things, but I've got books as well. And books are a particular pleasure because they're so personal. Um, you know, when, when all you've got is some black marks on a page, you're kind of doing a lot of the work animating it and, and the, the writer is talking to you. So that's why my books talk directly to the reader. Yeah. They go, hi, you know, my, I'm Andy, this is Terry. This is our treehouse. Well, what are you waiting for? Come up, you know. It's time to play. Um, and I think as a child, when you're recognised in that, you feel recognised, um, that gives reading a personal dimension that a Hollywood movie, no matter how good, is not really talking to you. Um, so it's a little more impersonal. Um, so yeah, I, I really truly wanted kids to just love reading and be compelled to do it the way I was. Mm. So I thought about all the books that I'd read as a child and kind of thought, well, I want that feeling of, in, of expansive freedom. Uh, and so that's guided my writing to the point where you won't find any overt important messages or mm analyses of particular social issues. I'm working right at the beginning where there will be time for all these books, but they will probably not even get to them unless you can give them that solid reading practice mm -hmm. and solid love of reading. So that when they, when they eventually move on from my books, as they will, there's other books waiting for them now that they are strong readers enough to, to deal with. So Enid Blyton did that for me. You know, I read obsessively Famous Five, Secret Seven, Adventures of the Wishing Chair, The Magic Faraway Tree. I wouldn't read anything but Enid Blyton for about three years. 
because she just knew how to spin a story and get it going fast. Um, eventually, I went on to explore all types of books. And I did a degree in literature uh, at university. So um, I, I do believe in the value of a book that is purely written to entice readers. So yeah. I was going to say trick readers, <laughs> trick emerging readers into becoming passionate readers. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really important thing. På svenska har Andy Griffiths kommit ut med fem böcker i serien om trädkojan. Ett samarbete med illustratören Terry Denton. I want to be able to tell quite a complex story in as few words as possible, using the drawings to really do the work of the description and show a lot of the action, so that a young child or a you know a young high school student who doesn't like reading can engage with a with a really good story with a minimum of reading effort because i think in the in the early t- days of reading every word is you are decoding the text and it takes effort as we get better and better we forget that and we just drink the words in and speed along without being aware we are working mm-hmm. but for the young child i'm i'm with them that if you can say, hey, look at our very cool treehouse, and then just show a double page of a very cool treehouse, they're already right inside it, rather than me describing it for for many pages. And I'm not very good at describing anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm good at saying to Terry, draw a treehouse with a bowling alley and a tank full of sharks and and a marshmallow machine that fires marshmallows into your mouth whenever you're hungry. Um, and he just, he just runs with that and then gives me back a treehouse that has even more things. And I go, oh, wow, we, well, we'll do this and we'll do that. So we're, we're giving each other inspiration backwards and forwards. Mm-hmm.